when I look at horses, we didn't talk about that, but when I look at a horse at the barn, when it's my turn to look at a horse that's on my list of 240, I want to see him walk. Now, when a horse is walking, there are conformational defects that I feel horses can live with, and there are conformational defects that I feel they can't live with. And it's interesting because I'll see a conformational defect that I absolutely feel a horse cannot live with, and that I'll just put a big X through that horse, and then I'll see one of my peers buy that horse for a ridiculous amount of money, and I'll say, man, he's got a lot more courage than I do. And I don't follow those horses because I'm just too busy, but... I would be almost willing to bet that most of those horses that I turned down do not amount to much. Because when I turn down a horse, it's from years of knowing that, well, with that kind of crooked knee, it's very likely going to end up with a bone chip or, or a lot, or a career-ending injury. Or that, the way that that tendon ties into the back of that knee, that horse could very easily end up bowing a tendon or getting a soft tissue injury. So... When I put an X through a horse, I feel pretty confident that that horse isn't going to come back and haunt me one day. But I do see horses that I put X's through sell for quite a bit of money, and I, I don't even know what to make of them, you know. But I know none of them have gone on to greatness. You know, uh, I would remember if I put an X through American Pharaoh or Dortmund. Matter of fact, Dortmund, I love Dortmund, but... He had some real confirmational issues that I could live with, but they that's why he brought 120, 130,000. He was he worked like a $400,000 horse and the guy that took a shot on him that that went to Baffert with him was really um he was very crooked through his knees, but I thought he could live with it. But for me to have lived with it, it would have been had had have been fifty or sixty thousand, not one hundred and thirty. But one hundred and thirty was still a bargain for that horse, as we all know now. So um, I want to see a horse. When I look at a horse, I want to see a horse. First, I want to see a horse with a big wide space between his eyes. We feel that horses that whose eyes are very close together have a lot less space for the brain. Okay, whether that's old school or, or whether that's founded in fact, I've never dissected a horse's head, so I'm not sure, but I like to see a nice big, I like to see, if I put my hand up like this, I like to see one eye at the end of this thumb and one eye at the end of my pinky. I want a nice big space between the eyes. When a horse walks, I want a nice big overreach. And by overreach, I mean when the horse takes his front step, I want the hind foot to overreach that front step by a big margin. If a horse is short, what I call short stepping, he may only overreach an inch or two. That is an automatic X off of my list. I want to see a horse minimum six inch overreach. And I've seen horses with a 12 to 18 inch overreach. And they're big, big walkers means big, big stride and usually big, big future. So, I, I want to see a big overreach on a horse when he's walking towards me and when he walks past me. And the further, each step, I want that overreach to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And don't forget, a lot of trainers, a lot of people looking at these horses, so as the day goes on, they get tired and that, that reach gets a lot smaller. But I make amends for that, and I can see the way the horse is, and I try and make amends for it, and I still feel a horse might have a four or five inch overreach in the afternoon that was probably a 10 in the morning, and I'm, I'm going to be okay with that horse. The, some of the other things I look for are I want to see a good foot. Remember, the foot is only about four to five inches long and three or four inches thick, and the foot is what is supporting 1,200 pounds. That horse is being supported by that tiny little foot. And there's an old timer's saying, no foot, no horse. And there's nothing that could be truer. If you buy a horse with bad feet, he's got to support 1,200 pounds. You're going to be in big trouble. So I want a nice, big, wide, healthy foot. If I take a chance on a horse with a bad foot, I know what I'm getting into, but I'm just hoping that his incredible ability is going to overcome the bad feet. But bad feet is, is very difficult. The next thing that we do is we want a big airway. We stick a, a scope into the horse's head. Big airway, 
big breaths, big red blood cells going to the heart, big oxygen going to the heart. A horse has to be able to breathe. If he can't breathe, a horse that has a, let's say, a two-inch airway is not going to be as successful as a horse with a four-inch airway. And it's, it's just a fact. If they can't take as much air, they're not going to be as successful. So we grade throats, grade one, grade one AB, grade two AB, grade three AB. The grade is the amount of the opening. The AB is the way the opening works. We call them asymmetric or symmetric. Do they open in, in harmony to each other or do they open odd? Like a horse's throat looks like a pear. And if one side opens real strong while the other side stays kind of still, we call that asymmetric. Some horses can live with a certain degree of asymmetry, but it is a negative nonetheless because it, it's going to be a negative to an equal, exact equal horse that is symmetric. So we want a big wide open airway. The next thing we do, and not everybody does this, is we do a heart scan. A few years ago, a group called Equix Biomechanics discovered that Secretariat's heart, and Secretariat is the staple for the greatest horse in the world. Whether he was or he wasn't, he w is what is considered the greatest horse in the world. His heart was X amount of centimeters, and we, can, we have always determined that that is why he was so sensational. Now, we scan hearts, and we, get, we can actually look at the scan of a heart and say, you got a chance for this horse to be a great mile and a quarter horse, or this horse's heart is in this group, which only produces sprinters, or this horse's heart is in this group, which only produces milers, and this horse's heart is in the Secretariat Elite group. Ahmed Zayat, who, like him or don't like him, I happen to love him, because he's great for this game, has American Pharaoh in the Triple Crown, and by the time you see this, you'll already know how he did in the Triple Crown. But that horse right now is the greatest horse in America today. And Ahmed Zayed, he will not buy a horse without scanning his heart. And he's had Zenyatta, uh, not Zenyatta, he had um, Escandrea, and he's had some great horses. Painter. I mean, you look at the the history of Ahmed Zayat and it's phenomenal. He has one great horse after another. This year alone, I forget the horse, but he had two or three horses that were pointed for the Derby, and every one of those horses passed the heart scan. So for three four hundred bucks to not scan a horse's heart, really you're you're not keeping up with the 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 next guy over. So we put all this together: the walk, the head the intelligence, the way the horse moves, the thrust, the overreach, the heart, the the airway, and we get those few horses where they where the bell goes off, the light goes on in every single category. And that those are the ones that become racing's elite. There's a there's an exception to every rule. There's a great little ball player, but most of the great ball players are look like great ball players. There's great small basketball players but most of your basketball players are seven feet tall and but there's a couple great ones bobby ussery you know I'm, bobby ussery was a great jockey but he was tall and he had he had he had weight problems there's an exception to every rule and in horses there's lots of exceptions but when you get a horse that lights up every category that we've just discussed at the sales you know going in you have a great chance to come up with a great horse the problem is no matter how perfect your horse is, he has just as good a chance of stepping in that hole or stepping on that rock or having that stray cat run in front of him and spooking him or flipping over in the starting gate or getting hurt in a stall or getting cast up against the wall or having another horse run into him on the racetrack like happened to one of my horses today. He has the same chance of something going wrong as every other horse. So a lot of great horses never make the races, but a lot of great horses do. And at the sales, we're at least starting with what we hope is a great horse. And then we need a little bit of God and luck on our side to get to the races.